the attention of the meeting. So it's nice when you can do it before, so then you don't have to stay after to sign stuff. This is pretty. Somebody knows how to do beautifully signature. Mine would never be that pretty. to order, but the roll call show that all members of the board are present. Our first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion passes. Our next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Wynn, will you please lead us? Next on the agenda, we have a public hearing on the revised budget for 2021-2022. So our first item is to go ahead and suspend the regular meeting to conduct said public hearing. I move that we suspend the regular meeting for the public hearing on the revised budget. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion passes. We will move on to the presentation of the budget. Do you have an intro for us, Dr. Sweeney? Madam President, members of the governing board and guests, my only intro is to introduce Ms. Catherine King, <laughs> who uh, will be giving that presentation this evening, and then later we will have the opportunity to vote on the budget. Catherine? You always make your slide deck so visually so appealing. <laughs> 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 I finally found where her office was. Yes, you did. <laughs> shutdown 
As you know, there is a large portion of the classroom site fund that is funded directly off of sales tax and or use tax. If you don't know what use tax is, when you purchase off of an online entity, let's say, well, um, I'm not promoting, I'm not saying, you know, yay or nay, but let's say Amazon. Um, prior to the COVID shutdown, there were several vendors selling products on that particular online platform that would not then charge the sales tax because they're anywhere in the country or world. So they didn't bother with it. Etsy kind of had the same problem. So, um, I'm sorry, the same challenges. So when COVID hit, everybody got shut down. Guess what? Government didn't get their sales tax because people weren't at the mall. So they took a second look at how use tax was being handled. At the time, use tax was around 5%. It still is in the state of Arizona. However, now there's a little bit more oomph behind it. If you are not paying your use tax, you can be fined quite high. So when I came to the district, that was one of the first things that Karen and I talked about, and she pays it every single month to make sure that we are not out of compliance. And um, the two uh, retail platforms that I did mention, they have made significant changes also to try and make sure that people aren't stuck with that. But you know, I'd much rather pay 5% as a use tax than 9% as a sales tax. But you know, I digress again. So um, that is the basics of where you're getting your money from for the district. Then of course we, um, oh look at that, I forgot to move ahead. There we go. So on the summary of the district funding, um, I, this is a, a lot of what you saw last time in December. We've got the maintenance uh, in operation, the uh, district additional assistance, this is actually just a fancy way of seeing your capital. Both are formula driven, both are very heavily weighted on your ABM. They have a whole funky way of doing weighted counts. They've got transportation riders that they count, transportation miles that they count. Um, TEI is your teacher's experience index. That's part of your SATER. That's the SDER that has to be filed every October. And the county determines what our tax rates are each year. And then, of course, the property valuations, because as property valuations go up, your tax rate um, gets nicer. We had a lower tax rate this year, but we actually got more money this year because valuations are so high. So that was we also have federal and state grants. You're gonna see this towards the very back of the actual budget form itself. And then, of course, state propositions. This includes your uh, classroom site fund, your instructional improvement fund, adjacent waste, things of that nature, and then bonds. Now, the primary changes in the revision two are based on the fact that we've got um, our federal grants I don't know if you're all familiar with the CARES Act. The CARES Act started out during COVID. They first popped out with the ESG enrollment something something. Anyway, I can't keep up with all this stuff. So all the acronyms. But the ESG grant, it, we used it all up December of 2020. It, it was received the end of November. It was used up by the 30th of December. Thank you, Dr. Allen. You did a very good job of making sure that was budgeted and used. Since then, we have been allocated monies out of ESSER 1, and then they came up with an ESSER 2, and then they came up with an ESSER 3. And we frankly um, did not have a grants writer uh, on staff to try and help with that. When Dr. Sweeney came on, he got a hold of a Cindy Daly. Thank you, Cindy, if you're listening. She just did an absolute amazing job of going in and revising all these budgets, which as you know, that didn't start up till end of January, beginning of February. So we have just recently, recently as in the last two weeks, um, secured almost all of our federal grants on their revisions because there's just two left. So um, in that, the ESSER 3 was one of the big ones, 1.3 in the allocation. That lovely little puppy included some language that allowed us to put counselor salaries to be funded out of ESSER 3. This was very huge because it helped save our MNO fund this year. Now, the other thing that helped was in uh, FY22 when the legislature 
ended their session in July, end of June or July, whatever it was last summer. Um, they had adjusted how the classroom site plan could be used. They decided to include 2100. What do I mean by that? In the USFR, under the function setting, 2100 references your therapists. It references your registrars, um, your nurses. It includes counselors and psychologists. So those can now also be funded through the classroom site fund, not just through MNL and not just through SO3. So that opened up a lot more opportunities for us. Additionally, what uh, moved us on this revision too um, is the AOI. So that's the Arizona Online um, Instruction. When at the end of last year, I believe it was, we had the Virtual Academy for Fountain Hills all set up. We've got CTTS members, the whole bit. However, every month I'd watch our ADMs and our ADMs never showed, so our average daily membership that comes out once a month never showed that we had an online presence of students. So I did talk with Dr. Sweetie about this. I'm afraid I turned into an egg. <laughs> But as I begged, he talked with the registrars, he talked with Angie, who bless her heart, she didn't start until after Dr. Sweeney, uh, but she just jumped right in there and uh, worked with students and teachers and were able to come up with a wonderful amount of students to add, which um, though they are only, their weight, so, so with the student counts, you know how like with kindergarten, if we have 70 kindergartners, we only get to count 35. Yeah. Right, so yes. it's a 50 percent cutoff, yes. right? So then students from first grade through 12th grade were at a full 100 percent, but the online students are at 95 percent, part time online students are at 85 percent. Nevertheless, that helped our numbers tremendously. We actually popped from a nine million dollar budget up to a 10 million dollar budget, so it really did make a huge, huge difference. Talking about student counts, there. Uh, this shows us what the adopted at the time of the adopted budget. So last July, June and July, we were at 1170, and that was an estimation based off of 21 members. <clears throat> First revision in December, we were up by two, woo! but we were missing that AOI presence. And then um, in this one today, we are able to use the AOI presence, which as you can see, popped us up to 1182, but look at what it did to our total weighted student count. That's a significant multiplier to change, and so um, I'm glad that we've gone forward with it. Now, something I did not include in this slide show, but I just have to give you kudos for, is I noticed that somehow or another ADE decided to drop off our override for this year, our capital override of 750,000. It was based off of a typo from back in 2014 or 15. Anyway, doesn't matter. The point is I tried and tried. I showed them one thing after another, all the voter pamphlets, blah, 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 trying to let them know this is the way it is. Even verified about maybe I've lost my mind, checked with state polls. People took a look at it and said, no, you haven't lost your mind. You're supposed to have that override this year. So, um, Finally, I went to Dr. Sweeney, I said, hey, I can't get anywhere. Now, honest to God, made me a little bit mad that you made one phone call and <laughs> we were done. <laughs> On the other hand, thank you for making a phone call and getting it done. <laughs> thank you. You got yeah. it no, Thank you so now, much. Now, what's amazing and wonderful about this is between that and the AOI addition, um, I need you all to really understand how amazing your staff is that this occurred because we were already past the 100th day. ADE does not allow you to make adjustments to your 100 day number for the main revision. I have it in writing from ADE that we were allowed to use the adjusted summary number rather than the full number. And don't you know, I sent that email to everybody so that they would have it, so that there is record <laughs> upon record upon record <laughs> that ADE allowed it. And same with the, uh, the capital override. We were so far along that even though technically I could include it in the budget, I was not to include it in the budget, but because of his phone call, I was allowed to. Nice. So, so truly, the staff is just, just amazing, and Dr. Sweeney has just been beyond reproach with all of this. So now let's go on to the overall of the expenditures. I won't keep you too much longer, but 
Here you've got just basically where we're at. We're um, with all of our salaries and expenses, where they're sitting right now, we're at about 74% for salary and benefits. We're about 19% for purchase services and 7% for supplies. Purchase services are up a little bit this year, but I need you to understand that's because of staff turnover. We've used a lot, a lot of substitute yeah. teachers through ESI. Um, in fact, I think the elementary school has nearly survived off of that to a certain extent this year. Um, I'm sure that will change with next year, but kudos to everyone who's pulled it off this year. So now let's look at that breakdown of salary and benefits. Just want you to see that we really are putting in towards the classroom. By towards the classroom, I am including both your teachers and those that are in that 2100 bunch and then the 2200 bunch. So what do I mean by that? The 2200 bunch is the bunch that do the curriculum development, that are your mentors and your coaches for your teachers. Um, so it's a great group of people and they're all allowed to be in this group here. So for the classroom and student services, we're looking at $4,758,183 towards their salary and benefits. That's 63% altogether of our salary and benefit budget. And then administration, that's your superintendents and principals. Yes, it's a little bit high this year, but that you all know how that happens, so we'll just let it be. We're at um, $1,105,000, so at about 15% for administration and on the salary and benefits. Then we have business ops and IT, so that would be myself and my team, and then uh, Dennis and his team, we make up at about 7.2% um, of this budget, facilities at 6.9, and then transportation at 8.42% of the total. Challenges that we have faced, um, as you know, staffing challenges, the turnover rate in FY22 for the elementary school was over 20%, middle school over 12%, high school over 14%, the district office shows over 30%, but you need to understand if you only have 10 people, it doesn't take long to get 30%. So, anyway, so that, that's some of the challenges that we've had. Um, the the MO budget is down 5.8% this year, um, and it is absolutely due to the decline in enrollment. I wanted to just take a look at this because I know that um, there's a lot of talk about. A 10-year plan on the capital side, there's talk about selling land. There, I don't think I'm saying anything that hasn't already been discussed um, publicly in the board meeting. So um, I just wanted to do a quick review over the last eight years of the ADM decline, and then its current trajectory, if nothing happens to change it over the next eight years, that's dropping down our enrollment from the current 1175 down to 686 students by 2030. I have worked in um, spaces of economic development and investment for many, many, many years prior to coming to this district, but albeit it was in the state of Washington, however, we have land just like you guys do and public schools just like you guys do. So, um, one of the things that will bring up property tax and always does is once vacant land is sold and allowed to be developed. One of the ways to make sure that beautiful vacant land is still kept for different owls and cacti and coyotes and all that is when you sell it to developer, you make sure that a certain percentage is kept aside as a conservatory or a reserve. There are ways to write contracts when you sell land to make sure that developers are assigning X amount of properties to be for first-time families. There are also ways to make sure that the district could continue to make money off of it by perhaps you could say, hey, you're going to handle sports fields for us. For every 50 homes or 100 homes, you have to do a sports field. And you got to keep it up. And we get the district gets a primary choice. There are hundreds of different ways to write these different things. Um, but at the end of the day, I know this sounds like a sad note to end on, but I, I just want to stress in this public hearing 
that um, if there isn't a way for Fountain Hills to continue to sell residential property, which is where your tax base is, if you can't find a way to do that, you kind of have a little long future. Let's come up with a really nifty niche marketing type thing. So, just a thought. But anyway, thank you so much for your time today. I so appreciate it. And that's the end of my talk. Any questions for Frank? Yeah. All right. No, but thank you for your presentation. <laughs> thank you. We do include on the board agenda for this budget hearing um, the opportunity for any public comment. That would be public comment specific to any questions or commentary just about the budget hearing. Um, so just checking with the audience right now, are there any questions or comments on the budget hearing that was just presented? I, yes, George. Yes, this is the last year of okay. it, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. With that, I will move that we reconvene the regular meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have the motion and the second? All those in favor of reconvening the regular meeting, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? No opposition. We will move forward. Our next item is approval of the minutes for the April 13th, 2022 business meeting, the April 20th, 2022 special board meeting, the April 25th, 2022 special board meeting for executive session, and the April 27th, 2022 work study session. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes. And I will second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. And thank you, Crystal. Yes, they for were all the, yes, <laughs> the minutes. <laughs> Go minutes. <laughs> okay, moving on to informational reports, I will hand it over to Dr. Sweeney for your summary of current events. Madam President, members of the governing board and guests, beginning last week, we have entered a very busy stretch of events. Uh, as we celebrate many of the accomplishments that our students are uh, realizing at this point in the year. Last Tuesday evening, Mrs. Richard Perkins and Ms. Tracy Perry showcased the artistic talents of the third grade students, and there was a concert and a display of uh, art throughout the cafeteria over there. There was an excellent turnout of parents and grandparents and staff and just community members, and the student work was very impressive. Wednesday evening last week, the middle school band and high school band performed in the high school gymnasium. Great crowd on hand, and I have to give kudos to both uh, Mr. Crusoe and Mr. Fox, as well as all of the students. They were really, really good. And it was really nice to see, uh, after some of the problems and struggles they had at the beginning of the year, um, they, they performed at a very, very high level, and I think it's safe to say uh, they have built a good, solid foundation from which uh, to build upon moving forward. Tomorrow night is senior signing night at 5.30 in the Falcon's Nest. I believe we have five seniors who have already signed their letters to the and continue their athletic careers at the college level, but uh, there's a event there to celebrate that. And then that will be followed by the senior recognition night at the community center. Uh, that begins tomorrow night at 7.00. On Thursday morning this week, uh, Principal Chris Hartman and Kevin Wilkinson will be joining me for the four-mile commemorative walk that's part of Fort McDowell's 27th Annual Sovereignty Day celebration. And in the divide and conquer mode, while we're out there, <laughs> Mr. Alexander and Mr. Markle will be attending the coalition's final meeting of uh, this school year. That's all on Thursday morning. And then next week, we have the kindergarten promotion ceremony on Thursday evening. And there is a two-night middle school and high school dance concert that will take place on Thursday and Friday night of next week. Moving into the last week of school, we've got a middle school uh, eighth grade promotion event on Wednesday the 25th. And then finally, of course, high school graduation for the class of 22 on May 27th. Um, I did mention in last week's talk and focus, we 
had information about high school summer school and registration for that is now open. There's a link on the high school website with detailed information, but the short version is we're offering core academic courses in math, English, science, and social studies, and it is free for our students. Awesome. And that is part of putting the ESSER uh, free monies to use to pay for all of our summer programming for teachers, any age, transportation costs, etc. cetera. Uh, the high school summer school is intended to be primarily for credit recovery, but it is open for students if they want to get ahead, take an extra course, free upper room in their schedule. Um, this is Jessica Kane is the contact of that if people have any questions, but I do encourage uh, any high school student interested to take advantage. We are also offering Title I summer school programs for students from both McDonald Mountain and the middle school, and the teachers of those programs are reaching out directly to the parents of students who qualify to try to encourage their participation. Likewise, we're able to do a structured English immersion program this summer for students uh, K-6 who receive uh, SEI services, and Mrs. O'Brien is reaching out directly to those students as well. Now, both of those programs, even though they will involve McDonald Mountain students as well as middle school students, they will be housed at the middle school. Uh, we are able to provide transportation for any of our students who are taking part in that. Uh, we're waiting until we get everyone signed up and uh, John Flynn has indicated he'll get a route together and uh, we'll run one route with a start time here of 7.30 for the high school kids, 7.45 for those students over at the middle school taking part in those programs. And all of the summer uh, events uh, for our educational programming, they'll begin on Tuesday after Memorial Day on the 31st and they'll run Monday through Thursday uh, through June 23rd. Uh, you may recall we've had additional books um, on review for middle school and elementary school to be added to the approved literature list. The high school has added some books that will also go on display tomorrow after this notification this evening. The titles are The Alchemist, The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Sun is Also a Star, Dear Evan Hansen, and Rosencrantz and Gittenstern are Dead. I will sidetrack uh, Rosencrantz and Gittenstern are dead as a Mr. Sunshine request, and I started reading it last night, and it's very Mr. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> these, these books are on display starting tomorrow, and it's our expectation we'll have them here as an action item at the first board meeting in August for official approval. Finally, I want to advise the board and the community that repairs were recently done to the football field, and it is good to go for another season. Um, this all took place last week, and it involved raking the surface, sweeping the surface, adding rubber pellets. I confess I wanted to be able to tell you how many pounds slash tons of rubber pellets it was, but I'm not able to give you accurate information, but it was a lot. And um, they replaced the hash marks, which are actually little pieces in there, and then added additional pellets to the seams all the way along um, to really beef those up. And uh, it will get repainted in the coming weeks. Right now, it's, the paint's very faded, especially after the brushing and the sweeping that took place. But it will be repainted, and it will be deemed ready uh, when needed. As for the long term, I just want to remind everyone that when that field uh, was put in, it had an age 10 year life expectancy. We're going into year nine. So uh, there will be a need to replace that field probably before the 23-24 school year. So that's another thing for us to keep in mind as we plan for our future capital needs. Ballpark estimate on replacing that is in the $600,000 range. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, I conclude my comments this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, moving on to governing board uh, reports. Starting with you, Mr. Stone. I'm good, thanks. Awesome. Mrs. Reed? Um, First of all, I want to say the Mr. Sunshine thing, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> just want to clarify. If it's very sunny, like, the kids are going to love it. So, and he does a great job. Um, I attended the facilities uh, use committee this afternoon, and uh, that's coming along nicely. Dr. Sweeney presented us some good information, and so we're kind of finally digging into the meat and potatoes of it. And so uh, I look forward to that, you know, wrapping up here in June and then having a good report for the board. Um, and then last time we had our meeting, I reported that my daughter had graduated from GCU and we had her celebration party on Sunday, May 1st, and 
her boyfriend proposed. Wow. He got engaged. <laughs> you know, I'm a proud mama. So that's all that. I watched a Power School webinar today, and I, I already had um, a few, like four or five days ago, they put the webinar out, and I re registered for it. So I listened to it today. Did you find anything interesting from that? I think it was all interesting. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. They had a lot of teachers and counselors and stuff, you know, doing the talking and everything. It was, it was a good webinar. Dr. Barnum? Um, I would like to congratulate Alex Schaefer, who um, was in the state golf tournament and placed 16th. Nice. And I think it's out of 160 some kids. So very, very impressive. Yay, Alex Schaefer. Um, the golf team, I think, did pretty well this year, um, sending one person to state. So very exciting. Um, prom apparently was a huge success. The DJ was great. Um, we did not get any phone calls. That was nice. I'm glad everyone behaved um, and everyone made good choices. Um, I, I think last time I was here, right, we talked about how we had been at the um, coalition um, meeting and then they went into the schools and they did something at the schools too and apparently it was very, very, very powerful. Um, really um, shook the kids quite a bit and um, was a mother talking about um, her family's experiences with that, that decision. So I'm really glad we we're able to bring that um, to our students to think about the real life consequences. Um, and then uh, the town of Fountain Hills received money through um, COVID relief funds and uh, some of our nonprofits related to our school applied. Falcon Fiesta got a got five thousand dollars. Nice. Um, the Booster Club, the Athletic Booster Club got five thousand dollars. I was told the PTO got five thousand dollars, but I can't confirm it. And Chinese not here. Um, so I think it's is really great to be to disperse the funds to the nonprofit to lots of money due to um, COVID restrictions. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and Falcon Fiesta, um, thank you, Judy, for being the bingo person. I'm um, the bingo boss. And yeah, if anyone is interested. And my husband wants to be the bingo boss too, yeah. but I said you're, no, the you're the boss. You're the boss. Yes, so we're still looking for volunteers and um, we're getting registrations in every day. Great. Um, I will um, add on to your comment about the nonprofits getting money and saying that Golden Eagle Education Foundation also got $5,000, oh, nice. which will go towards the mentor program. So. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. So we're excited about that as well. Um, I'm excited about all of the events and activities that we have coming up uh, this month. Always great to get out to the schools and see the awards and the you know presentations and graduations and promotions and all of that stuff. Um, I'll definitely be at the senior awards night tomorrow night. Um, and then on a personal note, my daughter wrapped up her last class last week, her last final. So now she's done with high school. Yay. All right, so moving on, we have on our list of reports Stugo, but I'm thinking that's a typo because do we have? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's oh, there! Yay! <laughs> Exciting! Come, please tell us. <laughs> you can tell us how prom went, right? <laughs> we can have the real inside track. Oh my gosh, did PowerPoint? Yeah. Wow! Yay. Raising the Thank bar. You. <laughs> Um, well, impressive. Well done. <laughs> impressive. <laughs> um, my name is Audrey Ellicott, and I'm the junior president in the Stugo class. Um, I'm going to be the party president next year. So, uh, like I said, as a prerequisite, the program sisters, uh, we originally were doing our physical board meeting, but uh, throughout this year, uh, we've been coming to board meetings to kind of approve of our events. I, I wanted to make sure that you guys know what we're doing. Year. So instead of coming to board meetings for the sole purpose of getting approval, it'll really be so for updates. Because we found that kind of circulating like our timeline based on board meetings to get approval kind of limited us to like what we could do for some events. So we'll be coming with updates and we'll be able to have a bit of streamline. So I have the presentation outline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. This is just all of our events. Thank you. Back. 
charity was for donors. Yeah. Um, that is pretty much all I had as far as updates go for Tom. I thought it was good. I thought it went really well. I turned it in. Um, are there any questions? Oh, but thank you. That was a great presentation. Thank you for coming this evening. Yes. We really appreciate it. And you're Thank free to go. You don't have to hang around for the rest of the meeting. If you don't Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll look forward to next year. What yeah, what you have to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have the site council minutes in our packet that are on pages 29 through 40. The student activity and auxiliary accounts are on pages 41 through 49. The unaudited financial report is on pages 50 and 51. And current en en enrollment and withdrawal figures are on page 52. Any questions or comments about any of those reports? Okay. Um, public comment. Krista, do we have any public comment? Okay, no public comment this evening. So moving forward with the consent agenda, uh, which begins on page 53, we have donations on pages 54 and 55, the accounts payable vouchers, pages 56 through 75. Payroll vouchers are on 67, excuse me, 76 through 80. The personnel action report is pages 81 and 82. Sole source providers, pages 83 and 84. Authorization for suspensions, suspensions is on page 85. The auxiliary operations fund is on pages 86 and 87. Certified evaluators, page 88. Check signers, page 89. Student Activities Treasurer and Assistant Treasurer, pages 90 through 92. Hearing Officers, page 93. Investment of Debt Service Funds, page 94 and 95. Out of District Placement is on page 96. Appointment Representative to Arizona School Risk Retention Trust is page 97. Voucher Signing, page 98 and 99. Garnishment of Wages is on pages 100 and 101. Summer Contract Issue, page 102. Beyond te Textbooks, IGA, with Vail Unified School District, starting on page 103 through 112. Educational Services, Inc. Agreement for Employment Staffing is page 113 through 128. And that is the end of the items that we have in the consent agenda. Do we have any questions, comments, or discussion about any of those items? Yes, thanks a lot, and you did a really <laughs> a great job reading them. Um, and this is a very busy time of year to get these things in here, and a lot of them are logistical for people in the audience. Um, just giving permission for administrators and other people to do things Renewing over the summer. Standard and yep, it's, these are standard things that um, we give our stamp of approval, but. It's nothing controversial or anything. <laughs> yes. Good call out, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> um, so if there aren't any additional uh, questions or comments on the consent agenda, I will go ahead and move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We can now progress to our action items, the first of which is to approve the revised budget for 2021-2022. That is based on the budget presentation that we received this evening. We also have received as an addendum um, the actual revised budget document. Are there any questions or comments? All right, hearing none, we can go ahead and proceed with a motion. I move that we approve the revised budget for the 2021-2022 school year as presented. I second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Our next item is the new teacher mentor stipend for the 2022-2023 Supplemental Pay Schedule. Dr. Sweeney, do you have any additional detail for us on this? Yes, uh, quite a few details, actually. Uh, this item is related directly to a discussion that took place during our um, study session two weeks ago, and it is the creation of four mentor positions at each school 
provide support to new teachers or for any teacher uh, who would benefit from such support. And the four mentor teachers will work with site administration to plan and participate in a one-hour professional development session at the beginning of the school year to discuss and clarify their roles, responsibilities, and strategies. And then each mentor will, will be required to meet with their mentees for a minimum of eight hours per quarter outside of their regular professional day. And the focus of these meetings will be on such things as prioritizing student outcomes as the main purpose of the support, providing clear, direct feedback to the novice teacher based on data gathered and observations, basing coaching in standards-based instructional practices. Uh, the mentors will keep a log and a non-evaluative summary of those meetings, which will be um, shared with uh, the site administration on a quarterly basis. Um, we are using Title IIA funding to fund the, stipend, the $1,800 stipend positions, and uh, I recommend approval, and we'll gladly answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions or comments? No, I really like that we're implementing the teacher mentors. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great addition to our schools. Yes, agreed. I and, agree. you know, I recognize that there's probably some of our stellar teachers who become mentors um, that do not get paid. So I appreciate the stipends to acknowledge the hard work because they will certainly be putting in more hours than are required. So much appreciated. Agreed. Yeah. If there isn't any further uh, discussion, I will go ahead and move that we approve the 2022-2023 supplemental pay stipend with the addition of the new teacher mentor stipend of $1,800. Second. We have the motion and the second. All those in favor of approving the motion that's on the table, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are no nay votes, so the motion passes. The next action item is the 2022-2023 extracurricular fee schedule. Do you have any um, introductory information for us, Dr. Sweeney? I do, and it's briefer this time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have been provided with an updated list of proposed extracurricular activity fees for the 22-23 school year. And of course, state law requires that governing board approve these fees annually. And so, um, what you have in front of you, it's on pages 133 and 134 in your board packet. Um, I recommend approval, but if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. I appreciate the um, kind of cleanup of clubs that aren't currently active, you know, in addition to um, adding the clubs that we anticipate will be utilizing the fees and some of the kind of streamlining of um, the way the fees are broken out either by quarter or annually to help it be a little more understandable for families for how those fees are getting charged as well as the um, club advisors as well so that they understand this is the kind of fee schedule that you should be on for your particular club. Yeah, and I just want to um, say again for families who can't afford these fees, we provide waivers um, and that is you know, we will never not allow someone to be part of a club or a sport or band because they can't pay. Yes, that's a very good point. It is good, yes. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Okay, do we have a motion? I move the board approve the extracurricular fee schedule for 2022-2023. Second. We have the motion and the second. All those in favor of approving the fee schedule, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Our next item, we've completed all of our action items, so we're moving on to information discussion items, which we have um, policy JJJ, a revision, along with some additional uh, revisions and new exhibits uh, associated with policy JJJ. Um, Dr. Sweeney, do you have an intro for us on this one as well? Yes, Madam President. These next three items are all related to board policy JJJ and extracurricular activity eligibility. You've seen the proposed changes in the backup materials. And on this one, if you have any questions, 
I'm referring to uh, Athletic Director Evelyn Wynn, who mm -hmm. is uh, prepared to answer any of those questions you might have. Do we have any questions? I'm looking mostly at Mrs. <laughs> I know. Dr. I mean, I guess I'll defer to Dr. Barnard. I'm like, this is, as a parent, um, uh, no, I, I appreciate that this is being revised. Um, I think it's just, you know, my concern, I've said it before, I always I'll keep saying it, is that, um, you know, if the kid is sick and has a made up work and, you know, they're doing things a case by case basis, um, you know, or if a kid was sick and then they come in the next day and they fail a test. And, you know, I just, um, I want to give our kids an opportunity not to be ineligible to play a sport. Um, you know, it just needs to be a fair policy. Obviously, if they cannot keep up with their schoolwork, and I love the way the introduction was was described, if they cannot keep up with their, their uh, schoolwork, then certainly they should not be able to participate in, a, in athletics. Um, but I do like the idea that students can go to practice, that when they're at practice, they should be doing their homework. Um, and I guess I would actually be remiss to say the Booster Club actually pays for tutors. So um, encouraging students if you can hear, to go to see the tutor. Um, you know, I think that this will be very, um, it's very detailed. Kids know what they need to do. Um, you know, of course, I read this and I say one week period on Friday. That would be terrible for a football coach if they found out one of their kids was ineligible Friday afternoon um, or for any sports, you know, like, you know, obviously they would need to make adjustments, things like that. But I trust that our administration uh, will do the right thing for kids. Obviously, academics is first, first and foremost. Um, and I love the tutoring that is in here and then also the reteach opportunities. So um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, please. Sure. Hi, Dr. Every time I come here to record something, I hope I never have to speak and it never works out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You looked right at Hi. me. We don't bite. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> to your point of, you know, a kid being sick or missing a test or um, what have you, I meet with the teachers. We couldn't meet virtually on Friday, and we have those discussions. Um, and if, you know, it is circum circumstances, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, you know, I do have it in the midterm learning affidavit that yes, I have the final say on those circumstances. So I do have those conversations with kids and their teachers because sometimes we need to confirm those conversations with kids and teachers. Um, and then to your Friday night point, this would start Monday. So the kids would find out Friday and it would build Monday through Saturday of the next week. Does that make sense? Yes, it's yes. Finding out the day of their game. Thank you. Else. I think that's or the parents true. aren't finding out that they you know, suddenly can't come to play anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I have a, an additional question associated with the Friday. What happens when there isn't school on a Friday? Then they get put on break. Okay. And the coaches are made aware of that and the kids are made aware of that. Um, Fridays are pretty busy in my office with all of this, especially if it's last minute, having, you know, freak outs and coming by again at 2.30 and this minute I got my grade up and you check it again and my coach know. And, you know, it does take up a good chunk of my day on Friday, but having those conversations with our students is important and making sure they're aware of you know just what grades can look as much as you know it's a privilege to represent our school in athletics and they do that so they you know where they need to be any other questions no but i like how you said it's a privilege i would um, like to add just for everybody's awareness evelyn worked with a large number of coaches on uh, editing revising and, and doing this so there's been quite a bit of input on this Coaches, parents, guidance counselors, teachers, it was a, we put a committee together to look at this. I appreciate that. Yes, Mrs. thank you. Yeah. I, I really appreciate the work that you've done in here. Um, and I just wanted to point out, Dr. Barnard kind of touched on it, that I really appreciate the warning week, um, where if students are notified that they are close to being ineligible, that they have a warning week, and athletes during warning week will be required to attend two Booster Club athletic tutoring sessions and two reteach opportunities. So I really appreciate that you did that. And my only comment is, this is close to Dr. Barnard and my heart, like we've, we've battled the, the ineligibility pro, po policy forever. 
So I always appreciate that when someone looks at it and kind of revises it, but it really just comes down to, like you said, it's talking to the students, it's having them in your office, and it's coordinating with teachers because sometimes it may be a student's fault, but sometimes as adults, we're not perfect either. So that's really our, our biggest thing is that teachers, you and our students are all working together. So that's, you know, whatever the policy says, we're going to follow, but we want to make sure that it's in the best interest of everybody, not just, you know, the adults. And it's never my intent to, well, first of all, I never want to say that this is a good idea. That's my, that's my conversation for the entire meeting. Um, but it is never my intent to sit a kid because an adult didn't do their job. Thank you. Um, so again, those conversations are important. I have worked with um, Mrs. King's department on you know, revising some sort of policy or putting something into place for our teachers so that there are a certain amount of grades done each week, um, that there's you know, a deadline on when their grade books have to be updated. So those discussions have happened with our administration as well. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions um, regarding either the, the policy, the regulation, or the exhibit? Beautiful. It's really well done. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Our next uh, information discussion item is the um, submission of proposed issues for consideration for the 2023 political agenda with uh, ASBA. Uh, I, we didn't, actually we do have this part of the packet, but we had also received as a separate email the list of uh, priority issues from ASBA. What we are tasked with doing is selecting our top five priorities plus an additional two items for consideration. Uh, I feel like it's always hard because uh, we do get a lot of great suggestions from ASBA under categories uh, related to adequately and equitably fund district schools to at least the national medium per pupil funding preserve and strengthen local control, improve outcomes for all students, and require public accountability for taxpayer dollar, dollars spent on education. Uh, and, and under each of those categories, there's multiple bullet points, and we're kind of supposed to just pick out of all of those categories and all of the bullet points, five bullet points, up to seven, really. Or we can make our own. <laughs> Well, you can make your own, actually. I know. Here. I do she every year. That. I was just going to say that prepared. one. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, there's some warning in here that's starting to get out. And you're um, the only one that, that's done the uh, two down here. I know. Too. No, I think it's, um, are we coming up with our, I well, mean, we can go through, I, mean, I know, like for me, I feel like we get a lot of bang for our buck out of the um, first section with the revise the school yes. finance formula to do all of these things. I'm like, oh, we get a lot of coverage there. Um, <laughs> yes, you know, yes. provide a stable, dedicated revenue source less reliant on the general fund or annual legislative appropriation. Provide dedicated school capital funding consistent with the constitutional requirement of a general and uniform public school system. Ensure the formula addresses the unique financial needs of schools serving students in poverty and in rural, rural and remote schools and fund distance learning at 100%. I agree. That is our biggest bang, and I think we pick that one that one in full day kindergarten. That was full day kindergarten. Yes, Those are the two we always. That pick. is so frustrating um, that in our society today, that the government is still only funding yeah. part time kindergarten in Arizona. In Arizona, yeah. yes, yes. Um, there is no yeah. reason that we shouldn't be funding full day kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, and unless I've missed this one before, I I feel like one of the new ones here that I think is really really important. Eliminate unfunded mandates and administrative burdens. Yes, I got yes. that one highlighted um, on my too. On you know, there are a lot of it's it's a really easy to sit in a state yeah. house and come up with laws without understanding what teachers, administrators, exactly. families then need to do. So it's fine if they want to come up with mandates, but they have to provide funding for us to be able to meet those burdens. Exactly. Bu bureaucracy, um, almost like a bureaucracy funding. Um, I, I that one was new. Um, and then we always, I think we typically pick something about local control. It's our mm -hmm. money. We should be allowed to do with it what we want. Um, and it should be equitable to what private schools and charter schools are allowed to do with their money. That's the one I always add. Um, 
And I feel like there's some wording that sort of got into that a little bit. Um, we did have under the require public accountability for taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. spent on education, there's both the established financial, established financial and academic transparency mm -hmm. for all institutions mm -hmm. and individuals that accept public funds, as well as enforce financial requirements and seek recovery of improperly received and or expended public funds by charter and private schools and organizations. Mm -hmm. That's the closest it's been to mm -hmm. um, you know, schools that receive taxpayer funds should have the same accountability. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and transparency mm -hmm. about where that money goes, what mm -hmm. those dollars are utilized for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also always like the fully restored ninth grade CTE and yes. CTED eligibility because I think it's important that we give our students as early as possible the opportunity to explore career fields and certifications because not every student as yeah. part of their path to success is going to choose to go to a four-year institution after high school. And the sooner that we give them exposure to options that is beyond high school, that you don't just stop at high school, that you go beyond high school, but what is that right fit for you? I think we, we create more successful you know, adults. They go out into the right. world, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and this one is the new one too. Ready? Um, again, under local control. Um, allow school districts greater flexibility in the divestiture or use of taxpayer-funded assets. And that is something that has, we've struggled with, um, where we're allowed to put m and where we're allowed to put capital, um, and um, that would be one that I would um, be interested in, in putting, because I do think that that sort of goes to the transparency, uh, fiscally, uh, fiscal transparency, um, and local control of our of our tax dollars. I think that's I think that's really more. I think we came up with six. Did we come up with six, or was that just a five? Eight. There's eight. <laughs> Chris doesn't make even <laughs> eight for real. Yeah. Well, no, the one had a bullet point and then multiple. Like there were little subheadings. The first Revised one. School finance. Yeah. Yeah. The school. I only had that as one. So what are our eight, Krista? Well. Not yet, and that's one that I don't have verbatim. You just, you just said it. But oh, the one about the CTE and the CTE. Oh, but that's not really one. That's my own. That's my own personal one. <laughs> that's her opinion. That we add. That, right. Yeah. So right. no, so you can be... you can cross that one off. Okay. Um, because I think it is captured here better now that um, under local control, the local yeah the local control okay. and mm -hmm. um, financial transparency for all institutions that accept funding. Okay. And then I have the fully restore the night grade CTE, and then Wendy, that last one that you. Allow school districts greater responsibility. The flexibility and the divestiture yeah, or school. use of taxpayer funded yeah, assets. Maybe I would, I mean, we can talk about this. Maybe um, we can do more than five. They have, they have lines, don't they? We can do seven. Yeah. Okay. And so that is seven right there. Okay. okay. Judy? What? Which ones were those the ones that we typically? Is there any that, since you are usually our um, our important person, <laughs> I'm your important person. <laughs> you're the one. You're the one who. You, you're the one who goes and delivers these. Oh no! Us. I know. I do. So is, did we get everything that we? But typically... the one that you the one that you did say though is because they shouldn't um, mandate something. Paying for yeah, it. funding. Yeah, yeah. it was on there though. It was. It, it has been, been on there for a long time, for several years. Okay. Well, I think a lot of these have been on there for several yes. years. It's just the legislature doesn't listen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. They listen, but not to us. Not to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys want these in any particular order when I submit them? Yeah, I was going to ask because technically we submit our top five corrupt priorities and then we give them two additional items for consideration. For sure, the school finance formula. That's the and the 
full day kindergarten. And when those are our top two. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, this is very prejudicial, but um, <laughs> well, let me guess. And that is um, <laughs> comment regarding CTE. Uh, you know, not all CTE programs uh, create, right? Yeah, right. Uh, and mm -hmm. so some of them uh, are as much academic mm -hmm. as they are anything else. And starting those kind of programs in um, even elementary school, but certainly by middle school has been proven to really help parents and students to plan the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and whether it's funding uh, in terms of uh, ADM uh, with the JTEDs or CTEDs, or whether it's something that's done uh, in-house, I, I think that uh, that needs to be uh, higher in priority because it just works so well. Mm -hmm. Funding is part of it, but it's, it, it's not always about funding. It's just um, making sure that that's available to students somewhere. Well, that's three. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm good with that being number three. Um, yeah, what do we have left? Unfunded mandate, local control. And Nadia, I still don't know what that when you said before CTE was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, that's OK. We, well, we said um, there were two different ones under required public accountability for taxpayer dollars spent on education. Um, one of them is establish financial and academic transparency for all institutions and individuals that accept public funds. That's kind of my preferred one. Otherwise, there's the enforce financial requirements and seek recovery of improperly received and or expended public funds by charter and private schools and organizations. That would be great, but I feel like that seek recovery is a steeper hill to climb. And if we could just get the transparency, that would be like the baby step. Right. <laughs> I like that. You want that as number four? Yeah, the established financial financial and academic transparency item. And did we get the unfunded mandates on the list? Uh, no, but that can be Do we want that five. one to be number five? It's on it's no, I mean for, for our but for us, us personally. For us personally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think mm -hmm. unfunded mandates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Want the one that you added a level district greater flexibility and the divestiture, yeah, okay. for use of tax. That's really and under the assets, the category of local reserve control. and strength and local control. Mm -hmm. So then that gets us really just to six. Is there a seventh one that we want to include? Do we want an additional local control one? Change override the budget increase language to better reflect what voters are being asked to support. Yeah, yeah, I, that would be nice that because would be nice. I think that had a lot to do with our um, capital not passing. People didn't understand it, it yeah. and we can't change the language. Mm -hmm. it, it's set by the state. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, I agree. That would be a, a good one as well. Yeah, I mean we were personally impacted. Not personally, we were impacted as a school district because of that. Those things. So. Mm -hmm. So those are our seven, um, and then I know that we are supposed to include some justification or, or they would like us to um, provide some rationale. Right. Judy, if you want assistance with that, I'm sure we can rationale. coordinate through um, Krista via email and get that Well, I completed. can put down the rationale. Yeah. Rationale is stop telling us what to do with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Give us more money. Stop. As stop. As stop. To we can. <laughs> Let us run our school district like a business and um, <laughs> stop making mandates that you don't want to fund. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Judy typically does that for us. And I think she would like to continue to do that. Yes, Judy? Yes. All right, so Krista, if you could kindly send to Judy the list that yeah. you've documented, yeah, and then the she'll take care of the submission. Thank I'll you. The, yeah. Okay, that was the last uh, 
item on the agenda. Future action, if you would like to see an item on a future board meeting agenda, please reach out to Krista. Dates of upcoming meetings. Our next meeting is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. That is a work study session here at 5.30 p.m. And then after that, Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, we have a business meeting at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, June 29th, we have a business meeting and a work study session at 5 p.m. All those are here in the FHUSD Learning Center. And with that, I move that we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? No. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Has anybody ever really said, no, I don't want to adjourn? Many times. They jumped off oh, and said, there's no more like business. Why? No, but I, I want to. Because they can? Because they want to stay here longer? I once said, I 